Hi everyone, this marks the end of our warming journey this year and here we present our work. Our focus is decapifying microscopy images of the brain. Electron microscopy is a powerful tool to map the structure of the brain. Like all imaging tools in biology, EM suffers from the so-called eternal triangle of compromise, which means that within the microscopy system, there is no way to enhance resolution without sacrificing imaging speed and sample damage. So we train deep learning models for a solution. Our models are able to generate two nanometer resolution images from a nanometer resolution sources. Our main objective, known as a decapifier, is a deep learning model that decapifies EM images and enhances them to a higher resolution. As is shown here, the decapifier restores details to the image as compared to the low resolution input. But as you can see here, the generated image differs from the ground truth in texture. It looks more blurry and surreal. That's our main focus of this project. Let's meet the team. We are Al and Annette. Annette is on the top right of the screen right now, and Al will show up in a minute. We are students in the Master of Data Science program here at the University of San Francisco. The project we work on is a collaboration of the Data Institute at USF and the Self Institute for Biological Studies. At the heart of our work is this guy called feature loss, also known as perceptual loss. While mean squared error compares the prediction and ground truth pixel by pixel, feature loss compares their features. It has great application in both style transfer and super resolution. Super resolution is a more serious name for decapification. To implement the feature loss, we need to train another deep learning model to be an expert of features because it will be criticizing the decapifier. We call it a critic. As you can see, if the features of the input vary a lot, the critic will be able to capture this. The critic compares the features of the prediction and the ground truth and measures the difference, which in turn is called feature loss. Because the critic knows features well, in our context, it knows the biological structures well, we hope that the critic will provide the decapifier with more information about biology instead of merely pixels. We now arrive at the core of this project. We want to study and find good critics for our EM decapifiers. The critics can be trained on different pretext tasks, which impacts the performance of the decapifier. From here, I will hand it over to my teammate, Al. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Al. And in the next few slides, I'm going to talk about the main methods and overall results that we got from our project. Now, as Annette mentioned earlier, in order for us to use feature loss, we first need a critic model. We tried three main methods to try and train our critics. The first method is what we call a self-critic. The idea is simple. We first train the critic on the decrapification task itself using the basic MSE loss function that Annette talked about earlier. We then use that model as the critic for our new decrapification model using feature loss hence the name self-critic. In our second method, we use the self-supervised learning technique known as inpainting. In inpainting, we generate random patches in the input images, and we train the critic to try and predict the full image by filling in those patches. And in our last method, we use the different self-supervised learning technique known as contrastive learning. In contrastive learning, the critic is trained to try and maximize the agreement between augmented versions of the same image, as shown here on the left and on the right, whilst simultaneously trained to maximize the disagreement between augmented versions of different images, as shown here on the left and on the right. Now, in order to judge the performance of each of our models, we looked at the PSNR and SSIM scores as our metrics, but more importantly, we also use subjective human evaluation by looking at the visual predictions of each of the models. In terms of the metrics, the self-critic model appeared to perform the best on the real-world test set by giving us the highest PSNR and SSIM scores. When we looked at the visual predictions, though, the story was less clear. As a first look, here's how the baseline model the MSE model does when compared to the original low resolution image and the original high resolution image. 
When we compared the baseline model to the self-critic, we noticed that their visual predictions appeared to be very similar to each other. However, when we compared the baseline model to the self-supervised learning critics, we noticed that the self-supervised learning critics appear to produce visual predictions that have better texture and structural details. In order to make sure that the self-supervised learning method is the reason behind this boost in performance, we also compared the contrastive learning model with a model that's been trained on feature loss where the critic has been pre-trained on a classic ImageNet dataset. As you can clearly see, the contrastive learning model does a much better job at visual predictions than the ImageNet baseline critic. Next, we wanted to find out which specific self-supervised learning technique works best. Is it the contrastive learning model or the in-painting model? And so we took a closer look at their predictions on a different test set. In the following comparisons, we showed the prediction of the contrastive learning on the left and of the in-painting on the right with the true high-res image on the, in the middle. Throughout these comparisons, we noticed one common theme. It's that the in-painting model appears to give visual predictions that have much better structural detail than the contrastive learning model. Here's another example where the in-painting model does better in terms of texture than the contrastive learning model. And in this final comparison, we show how the in-painting model does a better job at identifying individual vesicles when compared to the contrastive learning model. To summarize the results of our project, we showed that using feature loss does lead to better performance than basic MSE loss when we train our critic on domain-specific data. We also showed that the self-critic model is simple to implement and generates the best results in terms of the metrics. However, we also showed that the in-painting critic generates the best results in terms of human visual inspection, in terms of the texture and structural detail of its visual predictions. Finally, we wanted to note that the PSNR and SSIM metrics should only be treated as guardrail metrics when we're looking at super resolution models. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our project and please feel free to ask us anything.